Hello and welcome to our latest edition of our Cyber and GRC Leadership Series on the podcast. In today's episode, we've got a very special guest, Jane Franklin. Hi, Jane. Can you introduce yourself and tell the listeners a little bit about what your company does? Yeah, so my name is Jane Franklin. I'm an entrepreneur, a keynote speaker, a best-selling author and a women's change agent. And I'm I've got my own company and I work with women and businesses who value women. And I'm really out there to make an impact in the situation with regards to women in cybersecurity. So at the moment, we've got low numbers of women in the industry. We need to change that for various reasons, which I can go into. Um, so my job is really to not just highlight the problem, but help women and companies who value women to do a better job. So in other words, to to evolve. So the way that I help women and and companies who value women is really through my keynote um, sessions. So my my speaking engagements, my writings, I'm a a paid influencer in the market. So I blog a lot. And um, so I do trainings as as well. So and I've got a I've got a platform for for women. So though that's kind of what I do in order to to help the situation. And and the other thing I'm going to add is I will consult with companies. So helping them to attract and retain more more women in the industry. Thanks. It's a pleasure to have you on. So before we go any further, just outside of work, can you tell the listeners a little bit what you get up to outside of work, what your interests are? <laughs> Yeah, um, so I want my dog a lot. <laughs> um, I've got a very active dog. She's quite old. She's down by my feet at the moment. She's a, a Vimarana. So uh, they, they call them ghost dogs. So yeah, I'm a big animal lover. So it's, I walk my dog an awful lot. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm very active. So I will get out on my mountain bike. I live in the countryside. It's very hilly where I live in England in, in a place called Surrey. Um, I'll go out with my friends, I'll go to the pub, um, if anyone knows the holiday, film the holiday, um, that's kind of where, where I live. So it's it's absolutely beautiful. You know, and then, then apart from that, yeah, see my friends, do a little bit of shopping. I, I've got my family, I've got three kids, so spending time spending time with them. I, I keep it really simple. Godalming, isn't it? Is that, is that the area? No, it's not actually. They did film in Godalming, but um, the other place they filmed was Sheer. Oh, nice. It's, it's Surrey Hills, yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. And same. I, I love, I've got a dog, but mine's a little French bulldog, but it's, oh, cool. yeah. you so normally, exciting. you sometimes hear her sometimes in, in my meeting snoring on the floor. That's kind of the ongoing thing. with. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, very, very, very cute. Yeah. So I guess back on to tell us a little bit about your current role and overview of your, your history in cyber and how you got to where you are at uh, this point. Yeah, so I came into cybersecurity, like most people um, of my age and generation, by accident. But my, my way in actually was quite unusual. So I I have a degree in textile design, so woven, woven textile design. So I'm a weaver by trade. That's what I graduated in. So art and design you know, was where I started. And then I fell pregnant shortly after graduating with my first, um, with my first son. And that changed everything. And I ended up coming into the tech industry and cybersecurity by starting a company. So I, um, I started a company with my boyfriend at the time. And because I didn't know anything about tech, but I was interested in it. Um, I thought security would be the first place, a good place to start because I just found it really interesting. I thought it was, um, I thought it was a bit like James Bond. So, um, and I know I'm not the only one to have said something like that. I kind of cringe when I hear myself say it or write about it, but that, you know, that's how it was. So 1997, um, quite a long time ago, started a company led with security security was very new at the time there wasn't really that much to do apart from firewalls and um, you know some content management solutions and so that's how I got into into the industry and then just watched the market niched became a leader in penetration testing so after about five years it really niched niched down there were literally probably about half a dozen pen testers at the time and uh and so my company became one of the leaders you know not just in the UK but in in the world in pen testing so we worked with high profile clients 
and um, built an absolutely remarkable team. And then once that company, I mean, I left the company, there was a, a situation with my business partner where we split up. We were effectively husband and wife. We had two more uh, two more children, um, or I had two more children, and um, left, you know, left that company, left the industry actually for a while whilst um, restrictive covenants and things like that were being worked out, and then came back into the industry really to help entrepreneurs to grow and scale their business as opposed to like building another pen testing company. And then I happened to write a blog about women insecurity and the low numbers and then just things changed you know before I knew it, I was writing a book about the issue what's going on why um, women see risk in a different way to men and what we can do about it and then I was asked to speak so it, it just kind of completely changed and I found myself on quite a different path than the one you know I thought I was I was going to be on yeah, amazing and, and and yeah I know you talk about women but it's diversity in general in a cyber security team isn't it or, or any team is just so important because if you end up hiring the same person with the same views you don't get different opinions I I, I always think like you've got to look at and you, you see so many people talk about this but it's obviously a diverse workforce is so important because otherwise you're just asking the same questions and getting the same answers well, yeah, you're blindsided, but it's quite interesting, actually, you know, talking about diversity or gender diversity, because like anything, there are, there's different views and opinions uh, from experts out there, you know, who study this uh, full, full time. But there have been some interesting reports on the difference between gender diversity and full diversity in security. And there was one notable one by Cass Business School. And the expectation certainly from me was that full diversity, having seen other reports, would be the kind of um, key differentiator. That would be like, yeah, it's going to be like the number one aspect to have complete diversity of age, gender, um, et cetera, all the other aspects. But actually, this report from Cass Business School, which um, which is actually substantial and really interesting, found that it was gender diversity that made the difference. And when they looked at banks misconduct fines they found that it was gender diversity that actually had the greatest impact lowering the the fines and improving the risk management um, so that they they actually saved about something like 7.48 million per per year so it's it's interesting like who really knows like what is you know the you know that creates the greatest impact but i do believe that women see risk in a different way to men and if we don't have and that is gender um obviously if we don't have more women in the industry then obviously when our work is about lowering risk we're not going to do as good a job as um as as we can do without it and what's interesting on that i find is that the um aside from like lots of reports like looking into this but the world economic forum tracks up so with their global risk perceptions, they track gender. So what are the areas you're spending the most time on? Like, so I know you spoke about women in cyber. Um, what other yeah. areas are you really spending a lot of time in at the moment? Well, it, it changes from year to year. And because we've gone through the pandemic, and we we're going through this tech recession, you know, with all, all the layoffs. I mean, I was reading, I think today that 45,000, there have been 45,000 tech layoffs just in November this year, which is really quite incredible. I think there've been something like 151 tech layoffs, 51,000 tech layoffs in the whole of 2022. So for me, it changes. Um, at the moment, I'm doing quite a bit of influencer work and speaking work. So I've got um, three, three agents that work with me, you know, to get me those speaking engagements. And, um, and then on the influencer work, it's, it's writing blogs, it's videos, it's getting eyes on, on brand. Um, so that's, that's a lot of the, the paid work that I'm doing. There's a lot of unpaid work that I'm doing. So building the, the platform that I have for, for women, the community, looking at that and really tweaking it. Because although I say I work with women and businesses who who value women I also work with men I work with with human beings you know with with, with people so um but the mission the, the the values are aligned you know so so for me that's the important that's the important thing um you know for for me 
Fantastic. So in terms of women in cyber, I mean, can you talk to listeners about, I guess, the changes you've seen over the last few years and well, over probably the last five, six years, probably? Yeah, well, I'd like to say there are loads of changes, but quite frankly, there aren't that many changes. So and there are various reasons, I believe, for for that. Um, I, I am seeing more women getting out there, being more visible, which is really great. So using using their voice. Um, and promoting themselves much more, which is really, really good. So that's probably the biggest change that that I've seen. There are some companies out there that are getting the gender parity in their teams, uh, which is absolutely fantastic. But you know, I'm not seeing I'm not seeing the change that we really need. I'm seeing so much talk about what companies need to do, but the attention isn't there at all. You know, literally, it's it's like a compliance issue. Tick the box, you know, whatever they can do to show that they are considering it. But I'm not seeing that. I'm not really seeing companies and leaders really caring about it and making the changes that they need. And, you know, I, I'm saying that not with a, you know, you should be doing this um, kind of attitude or a blame mongering attitude. It's, it's actually quite unsurprising considering the issues that we have. You know, so teams um, are under resource. Uh, they're struggling to cope with the situation. There are more layoffs. There's more burnout, more stress, more overwhelm, and all of that stuff. So when you add in, yeah, you've got to find women who are in low low supply to come into this industry and invest in them. You know, to to get them up to speed to boost the the situation then I think, you know, for a lot of companies and a lot of leaders, it's just like, I don't have time for that. You know, this is this is the number one priority. So so it is really disappointing. And I do want to see that changed because when we do get more women, women into the industry, we do a better job and people are happier. So it is really important that that time is, is made for it. Yeah, I think one of the things that, I mean, I, I mean, I can only talk from experience of 15 years ago on a degree and I, I had a technical degree. But there was two women on it of, a, of like 80 people yeah. like you're talking yeah. it's kind of and I, and I know that's getting better but you it, it you need to int- like probably help women getting well want to and feel like the that it's a role for them in in technical degrees because previously I mean you talk to lots of people and you go to a lot of technical degrees that that's not happened uh, not that you need a technical degree to work in cyber but it, it's such a big problem I mean we've We've seen that it, we just get from entry level jobs, not that many women applicants sometimes even applying for the jobs. Yeah, well, there are, you know, there, there are women out there. There are a lot of yeah. entry level applicant, female applicants out there, and they really struggle to get into the industry. I know yeah. that from having researched them, speaking to them currently, there are so many out there. The situation often is, is um, hiring. So the, the requirements, the job specs, the process, um, and and so often the entry level women don't don't get in despite all of this media attention and people saying, yeah, we want women in the industry. So it's it just depends on the company as to, well, like, where is the problem and actually finding the problem. And so often what I hear is almost like a, a blame put on women. Well, there aren't enough women there. You know, the women don't want to do this, blah, 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 blah. And, it, and most of the time that's not actually the case. Yeah, I don't think that, like what you said, I agree with exactly what you said there. I think a lot of the time it's, there's that the stat that you've seen before about like males will apply for jobs when maybe they only hit, hit is it a few of the criteria whereas a lot of women will not I mean I don't know how true that is this day and you, you hear it quite a lot but yeah yeah that that comes from I think uh an HP report which no one can find yeah <laughs> but it's referred to the whole time yeah again it's like you know, I remember like speaking at a, on a panel recently, and um, someone saying one of the uh, the the host was saying, I think she quoted that, and also she, um, you know, she she said something else like women you, women have to see it to be it, yeah. and and this is something else that is often put out there. It's just like, well, you know, unless you know there are visible female role models, they're not going to do it, and blah blah blah. And I'm a huge huge. Um, supporter and campaigner have like a whole training program on visibility and personal branding and executive presence and everything like that 
and there are so many reasons for for that so I'm a big supporter of her but it's just like another obstacle being put in the place in, in in front of women well you know if there aren't women there you can't do it you know so stop with that indoctrination of course we can do it and I stopped her during the the you know, when she was talking about this and I said that's not the message that women need to hear the message that women need to hear all people need to hear is that you can do anything you set your mind to do let's just remove that that um block you know that indoctrination and, oh I can't do it because there's no one like me well you know like we're all doing it like the <laughs> Women pioneers out there, did they ever kind of go, oh, there's no one like me, I can't do it. You know, it wasn't a white women, women prime minister or like uh, whatever it is. It's like, of course you can do it. Of course yeah. you can do anything that you want. You know, so let's break down those barriers and, and make it easier and really inspire all people to achieve, you know, what they desire. Like, let's help them. And I remember having this conversation with someone who, who was being very practical and saying, well, you know, if you're blind, you can't be a surgeon. And it's just like, well, maybe you could be at some point. Like, who knows? Like with technology and things like that. So you're gonna you're gonna achieve so much more if you remove those limiting beliefs and the the, the barriers. I think one of the things you always see, especially in cybersecurity, these entry level roles, and you look at the requirements that they put on them. Yeah. And, you look, and they're not entry level roles. I mean, I mean, anyone who looks at it, it's like, okay that's not an entry level role. What you're asking for there is someone with like five year experience, but you want exactly. to pay them an entry level salary. I know yeah. there's organizations, if you come across Cap, Caps Lock, there's a few others of these now, which are like trying to yeah. help people get in. And obviously I think one of the things, even when I was, when I worked at, I think PwC and Deloitte, they removed the need for technical degrees to go into their cyber or IT yeah. risk programs, which yeah. when I applied was a, they wanted a technical degree 15 yeah. years ago. I think yeah. now you look at it and it, it, it's very different. But there are entry-level roles. There is more of them. And I think people just need to take a chance that security is not just a technical thing. It's If you look at like uh, policies, training, awareness, like anyone who wants to ask questions, even auditing, right? Ask questions, get in, understand, learn. You can make these roles possible. But I think it's setting realistic expectations of what you want from people yeah it, uh, i'm breaking some things down it's um you know it's, in, it's interesting with caps lock they're doing a really good job and i'm a big supporter of them but as someone pointed out to me uh the other day it's it's and it's a fair point it's like well you can only do that if you're supported yeah. so though you get the funding um like you would do in a in a degree it's, it's certainly we're talking about the uk here if you're if you're doing that you still got to afford to live. So, you know, like, how is that possible? Is it is it that you're living, you know, we can all find ways and get resourceful. But for some people, it's just not, it's just not even an opportunity for them, because they've got to be able to pay their way, pay their, for their rent or their mortgages or for their children as they go. So, like, having a, a way to enable this, um, this pipeline of of talent, of capable talent to come into our industry and and uh, and be supported in it and to do great work, it has to be, it has to be a, a big consideration. Yeah, I mean, one of the things that we did actually, and again, I think people who've listened to the show before might have heard me talk about this, was we had um, an ex-professional footballer come in, yeah. trained to be a pen tester. And like you said, that person was, they wanted to just learn and they wanted to do it and they, show the passion and they didn't come in with like this like the, the 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 what you would say the traditional set of skills but it's like if you apply your mind to it work hard you can learn this stuff and do it and that yeah. was an entry level role but i think they are few and far between and like you say like the costs of either retraining at a later stage yeah. if you don't have the money or support to do it it is a lot and i think it is a challenge for lots and lots of people it is it is you know I, I remember bringing a, a woman in she was uh, a vet so um like and I, I just want to clarify like looking after animals like she'd spent seven years like studying to be a, a, a vet 
It's one of the hardest things to do. Your grades need to be like so high and everything like that. I met her at an event and I was talking about the industry and she said, oh, that sounds really interesting. Um, I said, well, look, you know, like come come on into our industry. We'd love to have people like you. Um, we really need people like you. And so she actually took me up on it and she tried for well over a year to get into the industry. And she was going from her, um, her job into an, another job. And she did get that, but she had to take a sideways step. So she couldn't actually work in security. She had to go and take a coding job and, and be trained in coding and then move, move sideways into, into the profession. But it, it really is, it is hard. It is hard to come into the industry. It's not, e it's not easy. So I know you've said uh, that there has been improvements, but what still needs to improve? What, what are the things that you think employers need, need to do? Uh, most of them need to change their hiring practices. So like the message needs to, the first, first of all, it's like the awareness. So it's just like, well, what is it that you want? Like, where is the ambition? Why do you actually want this? You know, is there a genuine need? Because there's no point if there isn't. And a lot is driven by compliance, by HR. It's just like the tick in the box, gender diversity or diversity. Um, so really understanding like why are you doing this um, and then really looking at what's going on in your organization is it an awareness situation so you've got things set up you've got good hiring practices and you've got a good support situation at your organization it's just that people don't know about you if that's a, a problem area then you need to become more visible you need to really improve your personal branding and get your message out there and make sure that it's really honed and it's it's incredibly noisy on social media at the moment. It, the whole situation has really changed. So you need to do that. If that's not an issue and it's your hiring situation that is, is the issue, then you need to look at your hiring practices. And most of the time I see that as being probably the, the number one issue, um, the hiring situation. So adjust your, your hiring processes so that they are more equitable and you are attracting like great candidates not just in terms of like great female candidates but just like great candidates uh it could be that you've got those two things worked out the attraction bit the hiring bit but when you get someone to come into your organization and if we're talking about women here you know it could be that they're not supported fully so they're not invested in they're not supported that whole like integration is is faulty and um or it could be all of those things so it's really understanding like what is the problem what is what are the bits that need to be improved fantastic so i mean if if you would advise a woman now to make a move into cyber what are the skills how how would you go about this what, what would you advise women right now uh well network so it's just like um yeah really kind of understand what security is about because it is really diverse you know do you want to get into the business side do you want to get into the the technical side so try and understand that as much as possible and the breadth of um of of what the industry is have a think about do you want to go into a consultancy type of company or do you want to go into uh a company where you are part of a team and things are not static but you're there to improve things and, and um, really get involved in that organization and, and securing it. So, and that the two, the two um, types of organizations are, are very, very different. You know, you're gonna get a completely different situation if you go into a consultancy than um, an end user company. So really understand that um, and then network. So it's really like go and put yourself in front of people, follow people, build the relationships with people who are in the industry, in the area that you think you want to, to be in and, um, and ask them as many questions as you can. You know, find yourself a mentor. Um, again, that's a, a really good thing to do. And the other thing that I would say is like, have a look at the training courses and qualifications because they are needed. You know, at some stage you are going to have to get yourself a, a certification, a qualification. It is going to help your chances of being placed in, in a job. So, um, yeah, I would, that's that's what I would advise. But I think the networking thing is such a big issue because often 
you can shortcut your way into a job through through your network. So it's like there, it, there's so much power in that network. Yeah, you, you see it all so often, isn't it? Like people, even more now, you see jobs solely really being pushed via LinkedIn, via direct. I see it quite a lot now where people are like, no recruiters, here it is, I post it on LinkedIn, it's on our website. And if yeah. you're not on that network, you, you're not seeing it sometimes. Yeah, but even those ones aren't, aren't working so well. Yeah, so no, like, that's what I'm saying. It's kind of closing off the network of like, there's, yeah. there's, you're pushing out to people you know, and it, it is cutting off a lot of people's availability to see that. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's just such a big shortcut. I mean, like say the women who contact me, it's like if we've built a relationship, then I can get in front of a, a very large audience, you know, and I've, I've done this before at a speaking gig and actually said, you know, who, who's interested? I've got people who I know in my network who are, who are looking for, for work right now. So it's, yeah, that, that, that whole situation needs to be changed because it, it's, not, it's not working as effectively as it, as it can do. Is there any resources or areas that you'd recommend for people to go and look to learn more about this? um yes or educate would, himself as well I mean uh yeah there are I would so I've got I've got a new book that I'm writing which actually is going to provide all of these resources there isn't you know the one place where you can go and find out about events and books and people and who to follow and all and training programs and which ones are free and which ones aren't and which ones should you be looking at and things like that. So that's what I'm working on at the moment. And um, I've got all of the resources there. I'm just putting in a few stories and I've, I've got to do quite a bit more work on it. Um, so that, that, that is coming. And something like, I, can't, I think something like 20,000 words have already been written on that, on that book. Um, the other place that I would advise people go is to Confident Cyber. Um, and that's, Dr. Jessica Barker. So she's written a really good book. Um, and, and that's just a, a great starting point, I think. Fantastic. So I know when we caught up before, you mentioned uh, you're passionate about sustainability. Can you yeah. tell us a little bit more about, uh, I know you, you were writing a piece on this. Yes. Um, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So, I mean, like sustainability it's it's um, such a big issue and I cannot understand why more people aren't talking about this you know I was reading the other day that we have we have 27 years left before we run out of all the food you know in in the world we have 25 years before we kind of get rid of all the fish you know we don't have any more fish in the oceans to to eat we have um, a situation whereby um, we have used up, uh, I think, a third of the world's resources in the past 30 years. So we are using and consuming so much more than we should be right now. We are being wasteful and greedy and not considerate about our, our planet. And, um, and we need to do something about that. So the energy that we're using and the, when it comes to technology and, and cybersecurity, there's a really big part that we can play in all of this. You know, we've got to be more considerate about what is going on and how we are supporting companies to, um, you know, to, to progress and evolve, but with all of this in mind. So we are building greener technologies. We are being less wasteful in every capacity. So, you know, when you're looking at um, security, you can map security's three pillars of people, process and technology onto sustainability's three pillars of people, profits and planet. You know, and that's what we need to be doing more of. And I've just written a, a blog about this, um, which is on my website and it's on link, LinkedIn and it goes into more detail and uses some, some examples. So we have to be looking at the people aspect. The gender aspect comes into that. You know, we need to be far more resourceful and we need to be taking care of our people more. They much more. They are the foundations of everything that, that we do. Um, and so we need to be providing for them, supporting them and, and stretching them as well. So we don't have the levels of stress, burnout, absenteeism, presenteeism um, that are occurring. We need to be looking at the way we are, um, our processes. Um, one of the most obvious processes um, that we can look at is how we are designing 
securely, you know, so security by design or a secure development life cycle. I mean, will it, uh, the, the older people in this, in this industry have been banging on about um, SDLC for a long time, you know, for me, like two decades. Um, so we need to be getting it in much earlier. So again, we're less wasteful. We are um, spotting more vulnerabilities and bugs earlier in the design life cycle so that we're not retrofitting um, and, and so on. It's uh, so many good things that can come from that. Um, and, and, and one of those is like less waste and, and better security. And then we need to be um, looking at um, supporting technologies that can actually help us to be less wasteful and more, more secure. And there are lots of great technologies out there that can, can do that. Fantastic. So I mean, we, we spoke about a lot of different subjects, but what do you think you're doing at the moment that's really working and kind of resonating with people? Um, I would say at the at the moment is this kind of like um, this crossover between women and brand and the visibility aspect. So it's like if you believe in the mission, in getting more women into the industry and you want that, brand exposure, that elevation, then that seems to be at the moment working for me the best. And that's why it's kind of like I've been looking at things um, and looking at, well, you know, what's happened this year, what happened last year, what is going to be happening in the future as much as, you know, you can tell from the signals that we have right now um, and where is my business going to be going. So at the moment I'm thinking I'm going to be working much more with individuals um, than I have done for a few few years and I'm really going to be looking at this brand visibility piece and the the gender diversity piece much much more so that's that crossover bit fantastic and I guess heading into next year what what are the biggest areas of concern that you have um in 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 the industry in the industry or in or in the subjects that you're passionate about yeah, well, it's the evolution, I think. It's the progression. It's like, you know, the speed the speed of that. You know, what's it going to be like? And what's it going to be like next year, um, considering the, the the economic situation? You know, we've got <clears throat> a recession um, coming, or we're in it. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the tech layoffs, you know, how how hard is it going to be that that's a big concern really i think right now it's just like how tough is that going to be for many people because we've been through the pandemic and that was really tough and the the thing that is concerning me is this the pandemic was was a bit like a sprint you know so we're, we're we've got our a way to go and the pandemic was a sprint and we've been running that sprint as a marathon and that's why, you know, so many of us are exhausted and tired and burnt out and stressed. We've got the, the situation, the economic situation. We've got more attacks coming and like what is going to be asked of us? You know, what is the fallout from that? So the people aspect, I'm really, really concerned about. I'm concerned about the tech layoffs. Uh, we've already seen quite a few in security, how well prepared people are for that, what they're going to do, how they're going to cope, because I think that's going to take people by surprise. And, um, and yeah, so they, those are my main concerns. And the other thing that is, um, I'm, I'm looking at is this, uh, is the war situation. It's like, what is going to happen in terms of, of, of that? We've got the Ukraine situation. Is that just going to explode? Is it going to, are we going to move into war? You know, what's going to happen at the moment? We have so much, we have, we have a really volatile situation. And we have a lot of division um, that is 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 there. So yeah, I'm kind of like watching that closely and actually looking, uh, doing some reading, reading on it, looking back at history and spotting patterns and trends and things like that. Because there is there, there are cycles to this. You know, some people believe we're not just in like <laughs> in the northern hemisphere. We're in the winter um, season, but we are in a bit of a, a winter season in terms of the patterns you know of 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 where we're at so you know are we going to go into a war in the next uh, few months year two years three years you know what's what's going to happen 
Yeah. And so I guess on something a little bit more uh, lighthearted um, is going to be, so can you talk me through the skills for a great information security professional? So if, if, if you're looking to hire people, what are the things that you're looking for? Yeah, so it depends in, in what area. So it's a broad, like... There's a broad set of skills, yeah. yeah. I would want someone who is curious and interested, um, not passionate. If they're passionate, that's just like a, an extra bonus. That's great, uh, but it's not a requirement. So curiosity, interest, um, someone who is a good communicator because communication skills are needed more and more. Um uh, someone who can spot patterns, trends, patterns, things that just don't look right. Um, yeah, what else? <clears throat> uh, problem solving, creativity, uh, quite quite a lot of the soft skills. You know, I'm going to be looking looking for, but but the analysis skills as well. So it's just like yeah, problem solving, analysis, critical thinking, creativity, curiosity, interest um i would look for a challenger as well so someone who <clears throat> not someone who's not confident but someone who would challenge so it's just like uh, someone who might not see things in the same way as well it's just like well i think i think this or what about that so and the curiosity and the the challenge challenger by nature um can can really help but um we can also help you know with all of that so the safer we make people feel you know, this whole psychological safety, the, the more we can bring that out. So a lot of the time people have those skills, but they don't feel safe and or confident um, is another word that's often used for that to, to actually disclose that or communicate that because they fear they might be wrong or they might get shouted at or they might get laughed at. You know, so there's a lot of fear wrapped up in that. So those are the skills that I would be looking for. Yeah, and it's interesting, isn't it? A lot of the skills you're talking about there is obviously analytical thinking but you weren't looking for technical skills you're looking for problem solving understanding yeah. problem, just addressing things and asking questions in different ways isn't it it's like exactly yeah yeah and, and the thing is it, it does depend on what you're looking for you know if you're looking for someone to come into pen testing then then you know yes you, you can be looking for all of those but you might narrow them down a little bit more you know so it really does depend on what aspect you know you're you're focusing on but as a broad generalization those are those are the things and the other thing i would i mean i mentioned communication and and the one aspect that you know i think well not one aspect but you want someone who can verbally communicate but you also want someone who can communicate in terms of their written skills and in terms of their comprehension and what i find in cybersecurity is that a lot of people can't actually write very well. They can't communicate themselves in a written form very well at all. And often, often I find myself trying to ascertain like, what the hell are they trying to tell me? You know, what are they trying to say? I don't understand at all. And it's not, I don't see it as my inability in terms of comprehension at all. It's just like, you know, cause I'll pass it around. It's even to my older kids, it's just like, uh, who are in their twenties. It's like, what are they trying to tell me? I don't know. Uh, help me. You know, so, so yeah, written, written skills are, are important. You know, if we're talking about pen testing, you know, you, you need those in terms of report writing, you know. So, yeah, the comprehension, the written skills, the communication, they are they're really important. Yeah, I think the thing there about like, it, it's communicating a message, like you say, verbally, but also just like making a clear message if there's a vulnerability that affects all the people in your organisation in very plain written English where someone can understand it is non-technical jargon where they can just go, okay, I get what you mean there. I, I understand that. And I think sometimes that can be really hard. And I think, I think it, <clears throat> go ahead, sorry. Yeah, no, I, I agree. And I hear a lot of people talking about this and then I, I actually see them guilty of that. So it's like, make it like, not make it your mission, but make it so that no one can confuse like your message, what you're trying to say. And I, and I, I work really hard to do that. And if, if I don't get it right, then I'll, I'll, I'll correct it. And I really want people to uh, have my back on that. It's just like, because I'll, I'll adapt and improve, but it's like sharpen the saw. You know, each time you're, you're cutting wood, it's that you want to be refining, you want to be getting better. So your message is really understood and there's no room for like miscommunication. Well, 
you know, I thought you meant that. No, I didn't. Like really like hone your communication in written form and in in, in verbal form as, as well. And I don't see that care and attention um, within our industry on, on that. It's sloppy. Yeah. And if you had one wish that you could solve in the security industry, what would it be? Um, a better leadership. Yeah, the leadership is is a big problem. So <clears throat> I would want, uh, and it's not in, in terms of like, um, I would start with the leader as a person. So really to, really helping them to feel better about um, them, themselves, more confident, more secure, more able. Um, so less insecure, ironically. And there is a lot of insecurity within the, the leaders. So I would really be helping them to, to work on that actual personal development, you know, and, and then to build out from that. Well, let's look at let's look at all of the aspects that that you're having to deal with and let's improve upon those. You know, we spoke about recruitment and hiring, um, you know, the stakeholder management, the communication. I see a lot of I see a lot of um, uh, close thinking. So the growth mindset is a big one for me and the growth mindset in in leaders. You know, leaders are people, people follow leaders. You know, they're leading uh, a team, you know, so the more they can Im improve their, their leadership skills, their communication skills, their stakeholder management skills, um, then the better that we're all going to do. So and I, I want to see more of a growth mindset amongst the, the leaders because I just don't see that. I see a lot of closed mind, mind mindsets. And I also see them communicating messages like the growth mindset, but being closed minded themselves. It's just like, oh, yeah, you know, so you're not practicing what you preach. Yeah. You know, and there's there's there isn't the, the calling out of that because they think they're all complete and everything like that. But they're not. You know, they, they really need to be improving substantially. Yeah. I think one of the things you've seen as well is like the rotation in security leaders of like as well and i think it doesn't yeah. help them that and then you said the security in their job and i think sometimes they don't feel that themselves because they may come into a job where there's been three CISOs or three directors of information security in three years and it's like or less yeah you know the average i think the average tenure that i've i've heard and read about is less than two years 20 yeah. i think 21 months or something like that when you compare it to a cio and the average tenure is four or five years then it's just like, what can you achieve in two years? It's ridiculous. You know, yeah. you're literally getting your feet under the table. You're looking at what's going on. You're putting a plan together. You've just started to implement it. And at some stage during, during that process, you've already decided it's not going to work out here. And you're looking for your next job and are being interviewed. Like how much change, how much change and transformation can occur when that is repeatedly happening? It, it you, you see it over and over again don't you it's, it's just not happening and you, you, they come in you get I mean you see it all the time where people are like we need to change this this and this and either the budget gets cut they don't get listened to and they're just like in the end it's my name that's on the line for these kinds of issues you're not okay. addressing them um look I think there's obviously things changing with things in the news and starting to be things where people are being held liable for decision makings and yeah. board and look it shouldn't have to come to that to make to make it, people be listened to, but it shouldn't. It shouldn't. But it's all. All of this is. You know, there are many um, chief information security officers out there who are completely fed up, and they're going. Do you know what? I'm out of this, or I'm going to go and join a startup where I will be listened to, and I can actually make these changes and get on and bring back the love of of my of, of my passion for this job. You know, a lot of them are, are being blocked in these large um, corporations. You know, some of them are even moving into um, companies like Microsoft or Google or Apple because that they can, again, do the job that like fills that, their heart with passion as opposed to, to be in the end user companies where they're just being blocked or they've got administration issues like what <laughs> writing or it's not quite as we want, you know. So, yeah. It's um it's a real it's a real concern, I think, for our industry, just the amount of talent and skills that we are we are losing. Yeah. And and you can see why it's happening, right? I mean, in anyone, if you you feel like a punching bag sometimes that you've been sent in, nothing's changing. And you're the person that has to go in front off those issues to a board, senior exec. 
I mean, you see it all the time. So, yeah, you, you can see why there's people leaving to go to other areas um, rather than security. Or they are being blocked. You yeah. know, internally, it's just like there's a saboteur there and it could be their, their line manager. You know, it could be the CIO or someone who has got access to the board and the message that you are portraying doesn't fit with their agenda. So it's it's just being buried, which again is a, a very common issue. So the board don't actually get to understand what the real issue is because it's not it's not being presented, it's not visible. So it's yeah, it's it's really tough. And you know, is it any wonder why we've got as many issues as, as we do, you know, occurring, why it's not getting any better. Yeah. So the final question I've got for you is, um, and again, you were referred by someone uh, for to get you on to, to come onto this show. Is there any security leaders that you recommend or you think we should try and speak to? Uh, yeah, Dr. Jessica Barker. Speak to her because I mentioned her book and she is so insightful and so wonderful. There are so many people. And it's just like Jess, Jess is someone who comes to mind. So, yeah. Thanks, Jane. So, look, I really appreciate you having a uh, give us time to come on to this there's a lot of great things we've learned today um can you let us let our listeners know where they can hear from you linkedin websites or any other places yeah um linkedin social media it's i'm just jane jane frankland um my website is jane dash frankland um so find me on linkedin that's a really good starting point or if you want to speak to me about any anything that i'm doing um then please contact me through my website because there's a a form there that you can fill in and book a meeting to have a discovery call. Um, you can email me, but I would say try LinkedIn first and, and connect with me there first because email can get lost and they can get buried. Fantastic. Pleasure to have you on. Thank you.